With barely two years left to the end of his presidency, President Muhammad Buhari in recent months has displayed an urgency that was sorely missing in the first six years of his administration. With an eye on his legacy, the president has been keen to rescue, to reel out the achievements of his administration in the areas of infrastructure development, job creation, and food security. Yet, most Nigerians will be hard pressed to acknowledge that they are better off today than they were six years ago. Rather, widespread insecurity, two bouts of recession, high inflation, rising unemployment, and a weaker currency have seen more citizens thrown into the poverty bracket. Well, as Nigerians wait with bated breath to see if Buhari can alter the course on his presidency, we have been joined by Senator Mohamed Seydou Dansedao, chairman of the National Rescue Movement to discuss the state of the nation and the challenges before President Buhari in the short time left to the end of his administration. Good morning, Senator Dansedao, and welcome to The Morning Show. Good morning. Happy to be with you this morning. <clears throat> well, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Quickly, before we go into specific details, what's your assessment of the state of the nation? particularly with regard to those key issues, uh, security and the economy and the politics of uh, zoning, rotation, and 2023? Well, honestly speaking, my candid opinion on these three key issues is that um, the performance of this administration is not that satisfactory especially going by the high expectation of Nigerians when President Muhammad Buhari was first uh, uh, sworn in uh, for his first term. Many Nigerians thought that uh, by swearing in President Muhammad Buhari into office, at least 60-70% of Nigeria's socioeconomic and political challenges uh, would have been solved. Um, issue of security, one doesn't have to say anything. It's known by everybody, especially people like me who come from Zamfara State and uh, also who come from my own village, which is, in fact, the epicenter of uh, security challenges in Zamfara State. When you are talking about banditry. Uh, going by the promises made by the APC and uh, President Muhammad Buhari of uh, tackling the issue of insecurity, uh, I think there is much, much to be done. And uh, it is my candid opinion as well that uh, if right steps had been taken right from the time he was sworn in, I think at least the issue of unbanditry would have become history by now. Then, talking politically, I'm really disappointed with the attitude or by our attitude as Nigerian politicians. We keep on preaching, uh, fighting corruption. We keep on preaching honesty. We keep on preaching all kinds of virtues. But uh, our actions, uh, to the contrary. I'm more worried about the way the conduct of election in this country. INEC, the best of my understanding, has been doing its best by way of bringing new innovations, new strategies, new initiatives in order to improve its performance in terms of delivering to Nigerians free and fair elections. But the Nigerian politicians are, are not cooperating at all with the effort, you know, of INEC. Take, for instance, the way we conduct our primaries. Look at the two almighty APC and PDP. Look at what has been happening in their congresses. It leaves much, you know, to be desired. I think uh, uh, we have to retract our steps. 
we have to, 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 to change our attitude. There is no way the socio-economic and the political challenges confronting Nigeria today can be addressed so long as we as political leaders do not lead by example. We just have to change. Otherwise, I'm afraid. Otherwise, I'm afraid about the fate of this country, the fate of democracy, and our own fate as politicians, especially those of us who are at the age of 70 and above, and especially those of us who since 1999, they have been in public office up till today, and they want to continue to be in public office until the day of destruction. So Nigerian youth are becoming hopeless. They are becoming frustrated. They are being pushed to the wall. I'm afraid. Anybody that is pushed to the wall, he has no any other alternative but to fight back. And uh, the time Nigerian youth get to that level, I'm afraid. So I think it's better for us as politicians, as leaders, to change our attitude by doing the right thing. Look at a simple thing. Electoral Act. Electoral Act. INEC made proposals. Those proposals by INEC for amendment, in fact, if you are to conduct a referendum, you find out that 90% of Nigerians are in support of INEC proposals. Yet, there are some hesitations from the National Assembly uh, to do the bidding of Nigerians because the INEC proposal is not the bidding of INEC. It is what Nigerians want because they believe by those amendments proposed by INEC, it will go a long way in ensuring free and fair election. So, and uh, by free and fair election, you'll be opening some windows for Nigerian youth to come in and find some space uh, uh, in the political uh, power game in this country. I don't think it is fair. I don't think it is fair, I repeat, for us to continue the way we are going by denying Nigerian youth the opportunity to participate. These Nigerian youth, in fact, are more knowledgeable than us. They are digital uh, Nigerians. They know much more than we do. Some of them are very brilliant, very hardworking. Uh, they have made name even in the, in, in the international scene. Yet, they are denied in their own country of opportunity to do the best they can in order to change, you know, uh, the trend of what is happening in this country in terms of insecurity, in terms of corruption, in terms of economic downturn, and so on and so forth. So we, we, we have to. We are not doing it, in fact, for anybody but for ourselves, because that's our own savior. Failure to do that, to allow some space for Nigerian youth, it is my candid opinion that if you fail to do that, we are going to pay for it very dearly. Well, thank you, sir. When you talk about creating room for the Nigerian youth, what do you envisage? Are we missing the point with this um, debate about a northern president or a southern president? Should we be looking for a young president? Or do you mean more inclusion for the youth in the political process? And how can the youth really make themselves the deciding factor for 2023? Yeah, in fact, this is very important. These are very important questions. <clears throat> uh, I really mean inclusion of Nigerian youth in the Nigerian political space. But Nigerian youth as well, in as much as there is need 
for them to have some space. You know, they need to, 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 to be up and doing. I was really disappointed in uh, 1999 with some of the youth that um, some of them presented as a presidential candidate. In fact, they have the qualification, so to say. For me, they are quite competent to be president of this country. Some of them in their early 40s, some in their early 50s. But within so short a time, something must have happened. Some waters must have passed under the, the table. And then they began to withdraw from their candidature. And not only that, the youth generally, they don't rally around uh, their colleagues in order at least to make some inroad into the political space uh, uh, in Nigeria. Then talking about uh, North South uh, presidency, we have been talking about North South presidency for the last, uh, uh, in fact, uh, over 40 years. For me, I don't see any problem about uh, any section of this country having a note into the number one seat, you know, of uh, th this country. All that is requires is honesty and sincerity of purpose. And for us to be true nationalists that are truly interested in Nigeria as a constituency, that the problem of a number of state is my own problem from Zamfara. The problem of Yobe, the problem of an indigenous of ocean state, the problem of Oka Ibom should be the problem of uh, Kebi state. That's how we should see this country. The failure of political elites in this country over the years to develop this kind of disposition is the crux of our problem. We preach uh, ethnicism, we preach and practice a religious jingoism, but it is all sheer rhetorics. When I say I'm interested in, my, in the development of the North, once I'm given a minister, it's not the North that is in my mind, but my pocket. The same thing for uh, somebody who is clamoring that, yes, Minister of Petroleum Resources should come from our area. We are the oil producing uh, areas. Minister of Social Social should come from our area. Once we get to the position, our own area, you know, by the blessing of which, the blessing of which we have gotten the position, we forget about the people, we forget about the area, we are only interested in our own pockets, our own children. These are the kind of vices that have eaten deep into the fabric, you know, of Nigerian uh, politics. And uh, for me, I'm just getting, like Nigerian youth, frustrated and uh, grossly disappointed with our attitude that we just keep on talking, talking. But on the long run, I don't even blame Nigerian politicians. I blame Nigerian electorates. The beauty of democracy is that if you elect somebody and he fails to perform, it's just a matter of four years. Kick him out. Elect somebody else. By the time you bring to teach Nigerian politicians these lessons, I think uh, we are going to have a better Nigeria. But... Uh, the Nigerian electorate, election comes, uh, give me uh, 1,000 naira, I will vote for you. Honest, uh, 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 dedicated Nigerians who are truly committed to the unity and development of Nigeria, who are also committed to the well-being of the ordinary Nigerians, are there in all the states of the Federation. They are there in all the local government areas of the Federation, in all the world. In fact, in all families, in every family in Nigeria, there must be one honest, God-fearing person that is capable of becoming president of this country. But such people don't have money. 
the kind of money that is required to win election as president of this country. And people will know them. And people will come out and say, ah, yes, uh, Mr. Godwin is really a very honest person, is hardworking, is committed to our welfare, but uh, he doesn't dash out money. The money you will get that will not be enough for you to feed yourself for even two days. And then you suffer for another four years. And then another four years come, you will not learn lesson from the past. This is the most disturbing uh, uh, phenomenon that we are going through in this country. I think there must be change you know, of attitude. In fact, forget about the politician, but from the electorates. From the electorate. But apart from the electorate, what disturbs me more is the attitude of, I can say, the academia. For the recent past, coalition officers, returning officers have been professors in the universities. But what we see practically on ground at the collation centers, at um, the, 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 the counting centers, is very, very disappointing. I know the idea of uh, leadership of INEC from Jega to um, uh, Professor Yakubu of bringing university dons is because they have been critics. They are assumed to be very, very honest, very interested in developing Nigeria's democracy, committed to having Nigeria of the dream of our founding fathers. That's why this initiative was taken. But I don't think that initiative has yielded the desired result. From what we see practically in most of the uh, collection centers and uh, uh, accounting centers. So the entire problem, uh, in fact, covers the whole spectrum and different strata you know, of okay. the Nigerian society. Okay, okay, so, okay, okay sir. Uh, you've said a lot of things. So let me unpack what you've said. You've said the electorate. A lot of people argue with you and say, not the electorate, because it is what you, the politicians, give the electorate the work with. How about you, politicians, sort out your squabbles amongst yourself? You talked about insecurity. You're from a local government that has been affected by bandits or terrorists or whatever they're called. Has this affected you personally? And you talked about youth inclusion in politics. They want to come into politics, but they don't have the money. However, must Nigerian politics be about money in the first place? Let's look. That's why, you see, in our party, the National Rescue Movement, we said it over and again before the 2019 election. In order to pave way for Nigerian youth that don't have money, while PDP, APC, and other parties are saying our nomination form is 25 million, 15 million, expression of interest, 5 million. We said presidential nomination form, we said it's 500,000 naira. Expression of interest is 50,000 naira. For governorship, we said 250,000. I think even your classmate can contribute 250,000 naira for you to contest for governorship of your state. Yet, Majority of Nigerians are saying, ah, NRM is a new political party. Uh, they don't have money. So everything money, everything money, everything money. And we have been playing this politics of money for so long now. And what we are having in this country today is the result of money politics. And if what we are having in this country today is the result of uh, money politics, I think we don't need to be told we have to change our attitude. It must be politics of credibility, politics of ideology, 
politics of patriotism. That's what it should be. We should stop playing um, the ostrich. Rhetoric should be over. And the ball is in the court of electorate and the electoral officials. If you are given money, reject the money and do the right thing. If you like, take the money, but do the right thing. What pains me most is a situation where a professor we will take a token, a token from a governorship candidate. And then you will rig election, cancel the real election coming from the polling, polling unit, fill another form because they're taking a small money. It is disturbing, so, and very disappointing. So it's not the question of just electorate. It is not the question of that Nigerian youth don't have money. It is the main issue is we have to fear God if we want a better Nigeria. Otherwise, all of us are going to be consumed and we are going to regret. There's no question of blaming uh, one person or the other. It is the question we have to admit. I have been saying this since during the time of Obasanjo. When people are talking about a number of problems, I say, look, as Nigerians, we have to admit that majority of us, in one way or the other, we have contributed in one way or the other in making Nigeria what it is at that time. And the same thing today. What Nigeria is today is not just the failure of President uh, Muhammad Buhari. Yes. He, his government has its own failure. It's obvious. There is no doubt about that. But the truth of the matter, until we as Nigerians accept that, yes, we have serious problem and we have contributed in one way or the other, in the present situation in this country, there is no way we can get out of it. And the main problem is that a projection of blame. For how long shall we continue to project blames? I think it is time. It is time now for us to do what is right for each and every one of us as Nigerians to have everything. It is really time for soul searching in order to save ourselves, not anybody, to save ourselves from the consequences that are imminent if we fail to bring the necessary change. Well, Senator, you said a lot about inclusion, collective responsibility, security, the role of money in politics, and value that we can add to Nigeria. But you are chairman of the National uh, Rescue Movement. By way of summary, as we begin to wind down, uh, what are those specific things that you like to rescue about Nigeria? Some Nigerians say, look, Nigeria is even beyond rescue. We should even forget about it. But if you are running a group called National Rescue Movement, if you can just help us put your fingers on one, two, three, four, five things you want to rescue. And it's National Rescue Movement, is it uh, an NGO or a political party in waiting? And how is it different from another group called the Rescue Nigeria Project, which is left, led by a former governor of uh, Kwara State, Abdul uh, Fattah Ahmed, and uh, Dr. Usman Bugaji? Is there some kind of cooperation between the two groups that want to rescue Nigeria? No. No, no, no. Uh, you, are, you, are, you are like urging me to charge uh, that group of uh, plagiarism. National Rescue Movement is a political party. You said what? It's one of the 18 surviving political parties out of the about 100 uh, that some of them fell by the wayside. But first of all, about rescuing Nigeria and those specific things. You know, number one is corruption. If you don't tackle the issue of corruption, you are not going anywhere. And the best way to tackle corruption is leadership by example. It is not enough for anybody to tell me, yes, 
Saifi Kansado is the president. He is honest. But the people around him are corrupt. I mean, that is rubbish as far as I'm concerned. If I'm honest, the people around you must be honest. Otherwise, I fire them and bring some others. That's number one, leadership by example. Number two, National Rescue Movement plans is once we get governor, once we get a governor, that will be a model administration for Nigeria. If we get only one governor, in the next election, we get the presidency. Because what Nigerians will see in the state we are governing will show them in no uncertain terms that with NRM at the center, we are going to have a better Nigeria. Secondly, our governors and president must hire the best brains, the best brains. And they must be in their 40s and their 50s, and some mixture of few, very few, in their 60s and early 70s, at least to have some wisdom from the elderly ones. Because it is my belief for anybody to govern Nigeria so effectively, he must have enough energy. That's number two. Number three, respect for the rule of law. The cracks of the security problem and the corruption problem in this country is a lack of uh, sanction. You charge people to court, they come from their party and join the party of government, and then you abandon uh, the court case, selective justice. Under NRM, there will be no selective justice. Even if you are the wife of the president, if you are found to be corrupt, you report to AFCC. And they'll charge you to court. And the court will take the necessary action. This is what is required. Thirdly or fourthly, equitable distribution of political offices, equitable distribution of basic amenities. So long as you have a government that is equitable in political patronage, in public appointment, provision of basic amenities, God is going to be your guide. That is the path to prosperity. That is the path to a better Nigeria. That is the path to success of any administration. Once you are unjust, once you are biased, tribalistic, in the course of governance, God will cast whatever you do. You'll formulate a very excellent policy that naturally it can succeed, but God will cast it. That's what we fail to understand. We profess we are Christians and Muslims, but we don't behave in line with the teachings of the Holy Bible and the Holy Quran. This is part of our problems. Equity, justice, fairness are virtues that are inevitable in any society that want to live in peace, in harmony and make progress and development. There is no two way about it. And I urge you and all our viewers to read NREM Constitution, to read NREM Manifesto. We have a book we call The New Face of Nigeria. That contains our ideology. Let Nigeria read it. No political party in Nigeria today that has the kind of manifesto we have, that has the kind of party structure we have, that has the kind of mechanisms that are there in our constitution that can stop election rigging when it comes to party congresses. Let other political parties come and learn from us. So anybody that is truly interested in a better Nigeria, the Bogaje group you are talking about, they are talking about rescue. Uh, the former governor of Kosovo, Donald Duck. We have had several discussions with him. He knows national rescue movement is, is in existence. 
It's not a question of proliferation of organization and association. It is a question of summoning courage to join a political party. Let it be small. Let it be as small as an ant. But it has the right kind of document. It has the right kind of leadership that is required. Then let all like minds come and rally around that political party. Let's challenge the PDP and APC. All these meetings is, are not going to help anybody. Let's be honest. We know ourselves. As Nigerians, we know ourselves. Why can't we come together and give Nigerians the kind of Nigeria of our founding father's dream? We keep on talking, talking, talking. If I tell you the disappointment I got preparatory to 1999, you will shed tears. When I started the formation of the National Rescue Movement, there were people of my status from across the country, more than 40 of us. We started. But the day APC government said uh, they are going to restructure, they are going to constitute board and parastatal, before you know it, 70% of those elites had abandoned uh, the National Rescue Movement. They have joined the APC. Some of them ended up uh, just their board members and so on. So there's a kind of attitude of Nigerian elites. This is the kind of elites we have in this country. It's just sheer rhetoric. But if we want to do what is right, we know what is right. Let's do what is right. At our age, at the level we have reached, I'm talking about people of my status and our senior brothers. What else do we need except to mentor our children, our grandchildren, to take over the leadership of this country? to give themselves and their children and grandchildren a better Nigeria. I've been saying it, some people feel I'm being rude, but that's my candid opinion, that we at the age of maybe 60, 65 and above, we are the disappointment to this country. We inherited from the founding fathers of this country an honest country, Honest civil service, dedicated civil service, selfless civil service. In all sectors of the Nigerian economy, you can travel midnight from Patakot to Ilela. You can travel anywhere in the country peacefully. And this is what we are giving Nigerians today. The state of the nation today is what we have today. We must be ashamed of ourselves. And the way the only way to redeem ourselves is to now mentor Nigerian youth. Let them take over. The era of somebody at the age of 70 contesting for presidency must be over. It must be over. There are very, very brilliant Nigerians from across the country. Like I said earlier, in, fact, in every family, in every family, there are people who can leave this country and take it to the uh, 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 promised land. All that is required is for us as Nigerians to be sincere and honest. And fear God. We must repent. All of us, we must repent, Nigerian elites. And then do the right thing. Otherwise, I'm sounding this last warning. Otherwise, the Nigerian political elites, the bourgeoisie in Nigeria, we are going to pay very dearly for it. So we better do the right thing. National Rescue Movement is available for all patriotic Nigerians. NRM is available for all Nigerians who are honest, who want a better Nigeria, but who want to mentor Nigerian youth to take over the leadership of this country? Right. Uh, you have said a lot. I want to know your personal experience. I asked that question before, but you didn't answer it. Zamfara, 
Uh -huh. Are you reeling from insecurity? Uh, uh, my personal let the clearance. Yeah, your personal experience from insecurity. In ah, my, my, no, my personal let the clearance. My personal experience is really terrible. If you can recall, I think Nigerians can recall, I have had several press conferences, press releases. In one of the press conferences, I didn't know why I shed tears. Pointing out the dangers that were brewing underground and that all hands must be on deck in order to control the menace of ambanditry in the press state before it spread to other states and before it covers the entire nation. To the extent that I wrote a letter to President Muhammad Buhari that he should declare a state of emergency immediately and I wrote letters to all former presidents living and um, attach a copy of the letter I sent to President Muhammad Buhari that they should please urge Muhammad Buhari to declare the emergency and do something about ambanditry before it becomes a national threat. All that I did fell in deep ears. And the present governor of the Mfarai Matawale, immediately he was sworn in, he set up a committee under former IGMD Abu Bakr. I was a member and some others. And uh, we did uh, a thorough job in terms of finding out the remote and immediate causes of armed banditry, you know, and we produced a report. We segmented the report into two, recommendation to the state government, recommendation to the federal government. But I tell you, I'm not aware of um, uh, 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 substantial part of the recommendation that is being implemented. In fact, until of recent, because this uh, taking off of our network service from Zampara is part of our recommendation. But if at the time we submitted the report, action at least 50% of our recommendation to the federal government was accepted and implemented, and 50% of the recommendation to the federal government were accepted and, and uh, implemented, we would it have been where we are today? In fact, the issue of armed banditry in the entire country would have been substantially addressed. But it's only now, after things have become so terribly bad, what will surprise you is that the bandits themselves, at the time we, 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 we what? 75% 75, 75 of them had agreed to disarm. And our committee told them, we are not going to give anybody money for surrendering your arms. They said they agreed. And we told them, the only thing we'll do for you, we are going to recommend some rehabilitation program to the state and the federal government based on the number of arms and ammunition you surrender. And based on the number of bandits in your camp, you are going to get some assistance from the federal government for rehabilitation. We also recommended, don't forget, in 80 years, we, the first state was left with 25,000 orphans, about 7,000 widows, they are there, just up to 2019. All this in the report. We recommended that the state government and the federal government should come together and set up a foundation, of National Orphans Foundation. So that not only the orphans in the Mfara state, orphans in other parts of the country from all this crisis can be taken care of. We went up to calculating uh, the amount of money required to educate one orphan from primary school to university level so that the government will know the amount of money required. And I know if that foundation had been launched, NGOs, international community, Dangote uh, Foundation, and all these foundations would have come to our aid. But nobody even talked about the foundation we are talking about. I'm not even sure whether the, the report had been thoroughly read. I personally, personally, I'm talking about, about my experience. 
why it appeared to me that as if the federal government was not aware of the recommendation to it, I shifted out all the recommendations to the federal government, all the observations. I, with a cover letter I sent to Mr. President. Well, on that note, we'll I like was it. expecting that I may be invited to shed some more light, not only me, in fact, the chairman of the committee as a former IG, I thought we are going to be invited for some discussion. More importantly, let me tell you, we also recommended for setting up a special um, uh, committee by the federal government. Uh, I can't remember the nomenclature we gave the committee, but the, the, the function of the committee which we wanted to do. Remember, in the pages of newspaper, in the social media, you hear about all kinds of crimes. Bandits being arrested. Well, Senator. But the same bandit that had been paraded by the police has been arrested. Well, Senator. After six months, well, you hear the bandit Senator, good again point there. in the bush. Good point there. We're on top of the hour, uh, Senator, if you can hear me. Okay, we would like to thank, thank uh, Senator Seydou Dansedau for joining us on the uh, morning show. Brilliant points there about the state of the nation.